One fire lieutenant badly injured in a fire is speaking out. Yes, yeah, been nearly two months since the fire on Valley Street that injured Lieutenant Samad Rankins and killed firefighter Ricardo Torres Jr. Lieutenant Rankins continues to recover, and tonight he's speaking out about his experience. News 8's Sabina Carricos joins us with part one of this News 8 exclusive tonight. Sabina. And Lisa and Darren, first of all, we are so honored to have been the first ones to sit down and speak with the lieutenant. Lieutenant Rankins, I know you're watching tonight. Thank you so much for feeling comfortable enough to share your story to our viewers. The lieutenant wants you to know your well wishes have been getting him through this difficult time, but make no mistake, he has a long road ahead. Multiple calls were received into our communication dispatch center. It was the wee hours of Wednesday, May 12th. Fire location is 190 Valley Street. Fire breaking out inside a gray colonial not far from the Dixwell Avenue firehouse. The stakes heightened with reports of people trapped inside. One on the first floor, one on the second floor. Even then, no indication of the chain of events about to be set in motion. Two firefighters, close friends, running into a burning building together. Only one coming out alive. Firefighter Ricardo Torres Jr., father to a young son with another on the way, fallen in the line of duty. Lieutenant Samad Rankins, injured, fighting to survive. You know, it, it wasn't looking good in the beginning. I didn't think I would, I'd be here today, you know, because I was lost. You know, I didn't fully understand exactly what happened. There's not one day that goes by that I haven't thought about it multiple times when I wake up before I go to sleep. Uh, I hear a fire engine down the street, or I turn the news on. It's boarded up now. The house on Valley Street, the grass has grown long, and yellow tape still stretches from the bushes to the chain link fence. Little in the way of outward scarring that would give away the horror that happened inside. And in the frankest terms, it's much the same way for the man who survived. I've never been through anything like this before. You know, so some days it's more of the physical side, and some days it could be more of the mental side. Nuke, as those close to him call him, described to us the start of his shift that day with firefighter Torres, the old friend he had mentored and coached through firefighter training. I remember, uh, you know, the conversations we were having that day. You know, he was, we, we actually talked about, uh, because they're, they're going to be hiring a new class soon. We just can't, couldn't wait to you know, start working with these individuals and show them the, the right way. Sounds like it was just a regular day. Mm -hmm. It always starts as a regular day. Always. Mm -hmm. You never know how it's going to end. If you're ready, would you take me through that day? I don't think I want to talk about it. Yeah. It's very sensitive for me. Absolutely. I understand. Rankins is ready to talk about everything that's followed, from waking up in the hospital room after doctors worked to clear his lungs of smoke and soot. And before anything else, he wanted to know, where was Ricardo? I got off the ventilator and woke up from the coma. I actually asked the doctor, I asked my nurse and my doctor about him. But uh, it seemed like everyone was either avoiding it or they would change the topic. And then when the chief came, he was the one who notified me, who told me. And I'll never forget that day. You're supposed to be here. We need you. Just a week later, putting his uniform back on, hoping to be there for his friend one last time. I was going to get a four-hour pass to go to the funeral, then come back. But that morning, my condition wasn't good, so the doctors they thought it was best for me to stay at the hospital and watch the, watch the funeral from the, uh, from the TV. That's when they called some of my coworkers to come sit beside me. So I was very disappointed that I couldn't be there in person, but I know that 
little car was seen that I was still there with him. Physically, he continues to heal. Therapy is helping his battered lungs, and Lieutenant Rankins is able to walk on his own now. But his windpipe is still in enough pain that it hurts just to laugh. And in his mind and heart, it's been hard to find any peace. Those days, uh, I'm usually stuck in bed. You know, I feel like I don't even want to get out of bed. You know, I don't want to be bothered. Or, you know, I feel like being alone. On those days, therapy and his family go a long way. So do the countless well wishes and prayers from fellow firefighters, friends, even strangers around the world. You can see it all in the letters and gifts that surround him. And then there was this. The day Lieutenant Rankins was released from the hospital after two weeks in the burn unit. That was a moment of joy. I was in there for uh, 11 or 12 days. You know, I, I didn't expect that many people. I didn't know it was going to be that many people out there. You know, that was, uh, that was a good moment for me. The outpour from the community, everyone there was supporting me. And I, I never forget, I appreciate everyone. No words can express my gratitude. And the lieutenant, as you heard there, is an eloquent speaker. He's also an eloquent writer. And we thought it best to end with his Facebook comments that he wrote recently, saying, in part, this is life, injury, loss, tragedy, and depression. We keep people from knowing the truth because it is catastrophic. People can imagine how bad it was, but they will never truly imagine the depth of that horror. Lieutenant, we hope we did your story justice tonight. We'll have more in the second half of our two-part exclusive that airs tomorrow. Lisa and Darren, the lieutenant talks about how he's going to work to keep the memory and the legacy of firefighter Torres alive, and he has a special message for his supporters.